we have been saying that spirituality 101 is this there is a God and it's not you and it's definitely not me God is God precisely because he is completely self-sufficient in himself he doesn't need anything but we do we have needs that we must attend to if we are to thrive and survive. In fact, our whole being, by its very nature, is a vast collection of neediness. Just think about it. Physical, emotional, mental, and even spiritual. We're needy. This reality is something that we often deny and to our own detriment. But our neediness shouldn't be a cause for embarrassment or inconvenience. God created us with needs on purpose. And he passes on to us the responsibility of tending to those needs. Sometimes it can feel selfish to prioritize our needs, but it's just common sense. You can't possibly help somebody else until you've taken care of yourself. Caring for yourself first can and should be preparation for service to others. When we deny even a single one of our legitimate needs, we are not moving toward health. We're actually moving away from it. So we're taking this whole season of Lent to take a closer look at just how needy we are, how to best meet those needs, and as a result, how to be healthier. We've talked about some of the temptations that we face when it comes to our need. The first temptation is meeting a legitimate need in an illegitimate way. We will be tempted from time to time to do something we know is wrong to meet a real need. So let's say we're late for work, which we need to get to in order to make a living, and so we break the speed limit. The second temptation is meeting a legitimate need through a shortcut. With our needs, we are often tempted to settle for what is a shadow of the real and legitimate need that we experience, to take the easy way out, or to go for the shortcut. So let's say you've found yourself really tired recently, and so you start skipping the gym and sleeping in. I never do that. <laughs> Okay, I do do that. Third temptation is meeting our needs by worshiping them. We end up turning our needs into virtual gods. We make them the whole of our life. We give them all of our attention, our affection, and our ability. We pursue them at any and all costs. This is like the guy who arranges everything every weekend of the winter around hockey. And all of his disposable income, all of his free time is directed to hockey, which could be directed to his family instead. Today we are going to talk about two needs that go together. We are meant to live in rhythm between one and then the other. Life is a constant switching back and forth between these two needs. So to learn more about these needs, we're going to look at a passage from the book of Exodus where God gives Moses the Ten Commandments. Don't worry, we aren't going to do an in-depth look at all ten of them. We're just going to look at one of them for today. It is important to note that God doesn't give them the Ten Commandments as a condition for a relationship, but in the context of the relationship. Okay? That's very important to note that. God does not give the Ten Commandments as a condition for a relationship, but in the context of a relationship. God didn't say, do these ten things, and then we'll talk. God delivers these commandments only after he had demonstrated his power by parting the Red Sea and rescuing them from slavery. He delivers the commandments only after he has blessed them abundantly in every way. Only then does he give them the commandments. The commandments, in turn, reveal God's priorities. They show us that God is not only powerful, but he is good. 
God gives Ten Commandments for more successful living. They are necessary elements of living a good life. The commandment we're looking at today is the third command, which goes like this. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. The commandment goes on to explain, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. You see, God works for six days. He creates the heavens and the earth and everything in it. Then he creates the crown of creation, human beings who bear his image and likeness. Then, after all the work of creation, God rests. Why? You think he's worn out? You think God got tired? We know that that can't be the case. He's God. God doesn't get tired. God rests to set the pace and the pattern for how he wants us to live, the proper rhythm in which we function best. So let's take a quick look at this rhythm. God begins with work. At one point, there was no creation, and he decided to get to work and create something, not because he was bored and had nothing better to do, but out of the expansiveness of his love and grace. And since we are made in the image and likeness of God, we also are to work. Notice the commandment says, six days you shall labor and do all your work. The commandment assumes an inclination toward work as if it's something that we will naturally desire. Work is not a curse or a punishment as a result of sin. Work is part of the plan, written to the very act of creation and carved into our souls because we are made in the image and likeness of God. We not only need the produce and the profit of our work, we need the process as well. So it's important that we view work in the right way. There are basically three ways to look at our work. The first one is to see our work as a job. A job looks at work as something simply to pay the bills and to supply for our basic needs. And of course, a job does that. But when that's all that it does, well, that isn't very satisfying, is it? Another way to look at work is as a career. This is moving up the ladder or making a name for yourself. This attitude towards our work might pamper and please our ego, which is all perfectly fine and legitimate. It's something we find ourselves doing and there's nothing wrong with that at all except at the end of the day, it might not wholly or completely satisfy our soul. <coughs> the other way to look at work is as a vocation. People who see their work as a calling see meaning and a purpose in their work beyond themselves, right? They recognize the real gifts that they have and they put them in the service to a greater good and to a higher purpose. That kind of work can be soul satisfying. And ultimately, if we find it, it's given by God. We need God to have soul satisfying work. But that's only part of the plan. Work is matched with rest. Rest also gives you the opportunity to enjoy the blessings that God provides. Once again, God sets this example in creation. Genesis tells us that after God creates everything, he steps back and proclaims it good. Then he stops work and he rests. 
Not just recreation, though that can be good. Not just running around to a lot of your kids' sports programs, though sports and physical activity have their place. Not just entertainment and distractions, either. You know, there are actually some people who talk to me who can't wait for the weekend to be over so they can go back to the more manageable schedule of their work week. That's nuts! <laughs> sure, that's time off from work, but they're not resting. That's not the kind of rest we're talking about. Soul-satisfying work must be matched with soul-satisfying rest. Soul-satisfying rest refreshes the soul and the spirit, and it leaves us refreshed and equipped to return to our work. And to find that kind of rest, we also need God's help. This is why elsewhere, David, a wise man, says, the Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Sheep need to be led to rest and have to be made to lie down. <laughs> We're like that sometimes. We're like sheep. We can't always find that rest on our own. We need to be led to it. We need God to lead us to rest. And it actually begins, whether you know it or not, right here in our weekend worship by coming to Mass. When you make this a priority on your Sabbath, you are putting your trust in God that he will lead you to the proper rest that you need. When your weekend begins with Mass, you are placing your trust in God that he is going to lead you to the rest that you need. For our part as a church, our priority in putting together our weekend experience is to help you do just that, to serve that purpose so that you can leave here encouraged and equipped and maybe even a little inspired to go back out to the rest of your life and to work. So God has built us to need work and rest, those two things together. So let's think about that. Maybe you're working in a job that is just a job or a career that isn't a calling. You don't find soul satisfaction. This doesn't necessarily mean that you should quit your job or make a change. It doesn't mean that. But maybe you just need to look at what you're doing in a different light, from a different perspective, from the perspective of the greater impact that your work has or the giftedness you've got to do that work. Maybe God is calling you to something else. Maybe that dissatisfaction is leading you to another direction. In fact, some of our staff here because they felt God's call to change their work, did that, and they've joined our team. Maybe God is calling you to work for a nonprofit. Maybe God is calling you to the priesthood or to the religious life. Maybe he's calling you to work here. For some of you, this isn't an issue at all because you love your work and you appreciate how it is serving a larger purpose. And if that's you, good for you. That is a blessing. But it is a blessing that you should be thanking God for every single day because not everybody has that. Maybe you're a student and all of this is still way before you. Or you are elderly and it looks like it's so far behind you. But it's not. Take some time to prayerfully consider what your work is and what it will be moving forward. Because, and this is true, every one of every stage and state of life, even babies, even the actively dying, have work to do. We all have work to do.
On the other hand, maybe you've heard this message and you realize you need more rest because you don't have a Sabbath, not really. And what you do have is not sustainable. Begin by asking God to help you find the rest that you need. Just simply ask God to help you find the rest that you need. Knowing your needs and taking the time to meet those needs is not selfish, not at all. It is living in the reality that we, you and I, are children of God. He made us needy so that we will eventually come to understand that our greatest need is for him.